All right, here we go. We're going to be doing an epic crossover with Man at Arms to build Tiny Tina's Wonderland look. Today I'm making Tiny Tina, and she's one of my favorite characters, so I'm super psyched to put it all together. It's a lot of sewing, a whole lot of foam building, and so much painting. I got started in cosplay from just kind of going to conventions. I always saw cosplayers, but I never partook. Uh, but then I started working at a video game company and made a bunch of friends who cosplay, and they encouraged me to try it, and then it took over my life. I learned most of my cosplay skills from the University of YouTube. Like, we've all learned lots of things. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of like trial and error, I guess, and just playing around with materials. Everyone gets sort of a feel for the materials they like or don't like. I definitely prefer foam over like warbla or sewing, but I've definitely learned a little bit of each skill. If you want to get into cosplay, just go for it. You're going to be bad at some stuff and great at other stuff, but it all gets better over time. Uh, there's more and more materials available now than ever. You can go buy a whole costume and fix it up yourself or just wear it as is and go hit the convention and have a good time or you can make something from scratch over the course of like two years. I would say there aren't really like a ton of rules about the right way to cosplay. The most important thing is just doing it. If you want to see more of my work, you can find all my cosplay stuff on Instagram and Twitter and YouTube, all at Kendallart. Do you want to help? Uh, this looks like too much work. I'm going to get back to the forge, so you come check the sword out when you can. Okay, I'll lift right. my muscles. For this episode, I was, of course, doing the major forging of the blades. This is not entirely outside of my normal wheelhouse. Uh, generally, I'm doing more of a traditional style Scandinavian axe or an early hunter-trapper axe that you would find in early America. Scale is way different. Um, everything we do here is enormous, but that kind of is the fun of it, is the outlandish size. We get to make really cool giant things, but usually I'm making small axes that weigh like two pounds. sword has so many parts in it. Uh, it's like Western meets steampunk with a billion parts. <laughs> it's just so many parts. We've been shaping parts for like ever and we're still making parts. We haven't run out yet. If I was doing this in my own shop, I would a lot two months just for this one sword and we're doing multiple things in a very short period of time. Are you rolling? Yes. Are you sure? Because you turned it off. I, I, I can see the little red button. Okay. <laughs> All right. I just God. wanted to check. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Quiet. And tanner's on. So, so for this sword build, uh, they're almost every part had some machining involved, if not in part, then in its entirety. Fortunately for me, that meant that I had very steady workflow <laughs> throughout the last two weeks. Um, I think I had a hand on just about every single part that was made for this sword. Biggest problem with cutting the steps in this sword, there wasn't really a good spot to clamp on to the sword. Um, so that left a lot of unsupported material over the length of the, the blade, and that caused a lot of vibration. So while I was running this machine, uh, people were standing around the shop, and I, I think I caught a few funny glances from the, the medics and the, the film crew, because the machine was just screaming. Um, it was not happy about the cut that it was making. <laughs> Or the blade, rather. The machine was fine. The blade. The blade had so many vibrations in it that it was not happy. For this episode, there is a lot of CAD drawings. Um, Rob Decker, he spent an ungodly amount of time 
in front of the computer drawing, making drawings for all of the machine parts in the guard. Um, and honestly, we, we could not have done this build without him. Um, and without that effort, it just made everything run much smoother uh, and, and gave us good references for all the handwork and machine work that went into the very intricate and detailed parts of this build. There are so many pieces. I'm ready for my close-up. Action! Click the logo to subscribe, or click one of the videos to see more here on the Baltimore Knife and Sword channel, or go to Almy and watch Man at Arms.